so what is going on guys it is your boy nistro and today i am going to teach you guys or at least attempt to teach you guys how to play the dragon ball super card game um this game has been out for years and this past weekend they released a beta for an actual digital card game simulator something like Yu Gi Oh master duel uh, your legends of rune terra digital online simulators like that but uh, Dragon Ball Super has only been around for about five years. The only other digital way to play the game was this card game tutorial that they released somewhere around 2019. And this was around when I started playing because this Broly deck you see on the side here was actually one of my first decks. The simulator is pretty good at like letting you test and play the game. It doesn't teach you everything, but it teaches you enough to where you can get up to speed. And the beta that we played over the weekend is going to be at a point in Dragon Ball Super card games history that's way earlier than some of the things that are in this tutorial app. So if you master this tutorial app, which is again free to play, it's not like a gotcha or anything, you don't have to pay or anything to, to play this stuff. And they even have like this free battle mode where you can play the game without any real repercussions. You know, you can, you can play as much as you want against a CPU, you don't need an opponent. And the only real downside to this app, other than, you know, maybe some things that we'll discuss later, is that you can only face CPUs, you can't face other people online, but still, it's not the worst way to learn and enjoy the Dragon Ball Super card game if you cannot invest into the physical side of the game they have little tutorials here so tutorials on how to attack tutorials on how to combo and like extra cards and honestly i don't think these are the best at teaching you from the very beginning how to play the game i think what we should do or what i should do to teach you guys how to play this game is i'm going to start with a battle against this frieza deck and so before you go into a duel or a battle whatever it is you know the proper term is it shows you your deck list first off decks in dragon ball super are 50 cards so they can be anywhere from 50 to 60 cards and you can have a side deck of up to 10 cards your 51st card is going to be your leader right so your leader is not included in that 50 card number so technically it's actually 51 to 61 cards with one of the cards having to be your leader you can't play multiple leaders um, in the same deck you can only play the one leader and there is a lot of leaders as a matter of fact this is a website called dbs deck planet it is a really great database for looking up a lot of the cards that are in the dragon ball super card game and all i did here was just sort it out by leader and there is like a leader for like everything right like there is like meta cooler you have you know trunks you have king piccolo like pretty much any era or any character in the Dragon Ball universe, you have Xeno Trunks over here from, you know, Dragon Ball Heroes, you have Perfect Cell, you have Frieza Resurrected, you even have his little uh, minions, you know, even is not just like your main characters, it's also the funny little references, Gotenks failed fusions and stuff like that. They also get their own decks and their own leaders. Now, not every deck is going to be the strongest kind, right? But there, there are going to be a lot of options as to what kind of deck you can choose and the thing i like about dragon ball super is that often every deck tells like a story going back to the card game app right like this is the story of the uh Battle of Z movie right it's not even just this like goku deck right so in this app they have they have three decks that you can use in this app if you wanted to do a free battle they have the son goku deck they have super broly from the super broly movie right so uh, they have like Broly Evil Unleashed, they have the story of, you know, Paragus and Ba from the, the other planet, Broly fighting against Frieza, Frieza's call, calling his army and stuff, and Goku and time to, f uh, Goku time to fight and Vegeta time to fight, these are Goku and Vegeta in the movie, right? Like there's going to be a lot of different versions of Goku that and Vegeta that you're going to see, but it's not going to be always in the same era, right? If you look at a card, it says Battle of God Saga, right? Where Goku and Vegeta here, it says DBS Broly Saga. So uh, again, like oftentimes you are, you may see a lot of the same characters, but it's going to be different cards because they're going to be from different eras. They're going to have different traits. Like this one says Saiyan, right? Um, do, uh, or even even Piccolo, I think, is a, is a good example for something like this. Where is Piccolo at? Right? Because he says Namekian God here, right? And he, he would only be treated as God if it's after he absorbed Kami. 
Because if it's if it's before he absorbed Kami, then you know obviously he wouldn't be a, considered a god. Because the only reason he would be considered a god is because he absorbed Kami, and you know it even tells you Resurrection F Saga, right? So this is you know again Frieza coming back to Earth. Um, so sort of like in that first, um, you know, those two Dragon Ball Super movies, Resurrection F Battle of Gods, and yeah, there's even a King Vegeta deck that you know uh, goes from Kid Goku has Raditz. Like, not every deck will be, like, completely on theme, like this Broly deck is, but there will be a lot of decks like that. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go into what actually goes into a single Dragon Ball Super card. So, what you're going to see here, at the very top, is their energy cost, right? So, the number here dictates how how much energy you, you have to pay to, to play the card, right? And the blue dictates it has to be blue energy. How do you know that you're using blue energy? Well... In the game of Dragon Ball Super, any card in your deck you can use as energy. It's kind of like magic, where you, you, you have to put an energy down, and then you use that energy to play the card. But in Dragon Ball Super, it's a little more versatile because, again, any card can count as energy. And you can see down here where it says BT103, you know, this little code number. Whatever color coats this little section right here is going to be the color of the card. What you're gonna see on the side here is combo power. That's that's the that's the term that, that we use, right? And so the zero here is also another cost. Whenever you see a number in a circle pertaining to Dragon Ball Super, here it is a blue circle and then a, a circle with the number one in it. Basically what that means is that combo combo power it, it costs nothing to use this card in a combo. Now, how do combos work? We'll get into that a little later, when, when, once we start getting into phases and stuff. And every card has some sort of ability. This one has an auto effect, which means as soon as its you know activation requirement is fulfilled, so its activation requirement is when you play this card. Look up to look at up to seven cards from the top of your deck, and then you choose a blue Son Goku among them and add it to your hand. It mentions Son Goku, and that would be your character, right? So you see, like, its character is listed as Son Goku. If you look at your other Goku cards, um, this is Goten, so it's listed as Son Goten. And if you look at, um, you know, your Rapid Spirit Ball Son Goku, it's listed as Son Goku. So, you know, that's usually consistent across the board. You're not going to have any mistakes with that, right? There are going to be some cards that have multiple characters on them, and so they are going to be treated as multiple uh, characters at the same time, so it could be treated as Son Goku, could be treated as Vegeta. There are going to be a lot of cards like that that you're going to come into in, into the game. But most car most cards are going to be a single character, single trait, and a single era. Era usually does not come into play in like gameplay. I have I have never seen a card that specifies someone's era, but the special traits and the character is what you should be paying attention to the most. Other than that, we have a card's actual power. And so the way that battle works in this game is that when you are attacking someone, you have to have either equal or higher attack power to beat them in that battle. But there is also a defense phase where if they, you know, um, can use enough cards from their hand with, with combo power to achieve a higher attack stat, then they will not be destroyed by that battle. But unlike some other card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! where if you attack someone and you are weaker, you get destroyed, in this game there sort of is no downside to attacking. If you attack and you're weaker, you're attacking purely so that you can activate something like an auto skill, like what your leader has, and you won't take any damage from it. Let's start to play an actual game so that you guys can actually start to see these things in motion. So. These are both of our leaders, right? So we are facing up against a Frieza leader, and we drew our opening six cards. Regardless of whether you go first or second, you do get to redraw any number of cards in your hand at the very start of the game, before you place the cards in your life down. We sort of just want to take out anything that's redundant or anything that costs too high. So this four drop Gohan, it's cool, but we're not going to get to four energy for another four turns, so we don't need it right now. I'd rather switch this out for something better. This Trunks, we have two of them in our hand. I don't think we're going to need two of them in the immediate future. I think it would be worth swapping out for something better. This Goku, a six drop, is something that we're not gonna be able to use right now. 
So it's better if we put it back and try to get something better. And then we can hit confirm on the side here to shuffle back our three. And then we got three more cards. So we got another Goku, we got Whis's Coercion, and we got a you know Super Saiyan 3 Goku here. So the Frieza deck is going first. And so to start they, their turn, they put one card into energy and they ended their turn. They can they could have used that energy to play a card with one drop, but they chose not to. Um, also, the person going first does not attack. And on top of not attacking, they only start with six cards. Versus where if you go second, you draw a seventh card before you select a card to use as energy. So we drew uh, Assailant Vegeta, and it's a three drop with critical. Now, we, we can only place down one energy at a time in our charge phase. But there are alternate effects in our deck that could potentially place more energy down. So... Although three energy isn't impossible to get to, we are still going to put it down because it is, I would say, the weakest card in our hand right now. After you charge your energy, you go into the main phase. Now, if you know, again, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, because I'm, I'm going to be referencing Yu-Gi-Oh a lot because this is this has been a Yu-Gi-Oh channel for as long as it's been around, so I'm sure a lot of you watching will probably understand this in Yu-Gi-Oh terms. Your main phase is basically your entire turn. Everything happens in the main phase. You can attack in the main phase, you can play cards in the main phase. There's no strict order between what you have to do and when. You can do it all at your own leisure during the main phase. So after you charge your energy, that's when the main phase starts. If you wanted to declare an attack, which is what you know you could do with your Goku before playing a card you could do that and then you could play the card after and then the card you play can also declare an attack now our leader has a skill where when it attacks i can switch my, one of my blue energy back to active mode basically what that means is that when you play a card let's play our son goku from hand our one drop son goku so now his effect activates when it when it's played and we did not pull any gokus from the top of our deck so it was it was a bit of a whiff but now we used up our one energy, but by attacking with our son Goku into our opponent's leader, I can switch one of my blue energy back to active mode so I can take my energy and now it is replenished. And now it's giving me the choice to combo and this is what comes into, this is where combo power comes into, uh, comes into play, right? So again, our kind stance on Goku would give us an extra 5,000 combo power. Um, now, there are going to be some cards where they have a one cost for combo power, but they give you even more. These are a lot less worth it, but if you have the extra energy, sometimes it may be a good thing to you know consider should you use this for combo. But usually the cards that have one drop are usually stronger cards, so is it going to be worth sacrificing a card for a single combo just for a single attack or should you keep it in your hand so now that we're attacking we are not going to boost up this goku because they are at eight life if they block this attack they are going to be losing card advantage and what do i mean by that because they would have to put one of their cards down to protect this frieza from being attacked and when you take damage in this game these eight these eight cards that you see in the life this number is eight cards from the top of your deck that you get one every time you take you, you take damage to your leader so if my attack were to be successful his life would go down to seven and he gets to add one random card from his life to his hand you never really know what cards are in your life but at the same time that's not entirely the worst thing because you know um well Okay, so you get to add a card from your life to your hand. You don't know what's in your life, but there are some decks that can uh, swap out cards in their life and cards in their hand, and or that get to look at their life. Like usually Shenron decks, decks that are based around the Dragon Balls, are you know some good examples of that. So we'll see if this CPU blocks this single attack. But you know, j just for the sake of showing you how it's done, you can place cards that are in either that are either in your hand or in your battle area, it's still in active mode to, um, as combo. 
So now there's a defense step and he gets to use... He's going to use, you know, one to put him up to 1500 and two to make him up to 20,000. And because he is at 20,000 now, he blocked the attack. Right? So he does not take one life. But he just used two cards from hand to block an attack from a card that I used only one card to, to you know, to do. So now he's only at three cards in hand. So I don't think it is a is a, it, I don't think it's a smart strategy to block too many attacks early. And I'll tell you why uh, just in a little bit. But we have one more energy to use. So we're going to place down this Bulma. And this Bulma has a really interesting effect. Because when she's played, she gets to add a, a Whis card with energy cost of 4 lower from our deck to our hand. Now, in this tutorial deck, there is only one Whis card that you can add. But it's a guaranteed search. And you'll come to find that those are not very common in Dragon Ball Super. Especially earlier, earlier on in the game. Most cards are, are going to be like this Goku, where it's like you look at a top, you know, top seven, top five, top three. Most times you're not, you don't, there are not a lot of cards in the game that just say, just add it from deck to hand. And yeah, this Bulma only has 1,000 attack, but it has 5,000 combo power. So what, what, what do we want to do with this Bulma while it's on the field? Well, we want to keep it in active mode. Basically, by keeping this Bulma in active mode, they cannot select it for an attack. But we can use it, we can still use it as a combo power next turn. And it's better than keeping it in our hand because by playing it, we added another card from deck to hand that we can use later on in the game. Which this this Whis is crazy, it has a really good effect. Um and now that we have ran out of energy, our turn's over. Now that didn't really feel like a strict number of phases and everything. It sort of just felt like we were we were just doing whatever felt right at the time, and that's sort of the beauty of Dragon Ball Super. It's like it sort of gives you a little more free flowing, um, free flowing turns that like you don't have to have a strict, um, a strict way of doing things to play. Right? Obviously, there are optimal ways to play like using an energy before attacking with this Goku so that you can get that energy back. But, um, you know, again, it's it's a really freeform game and, you know, you sort of get to play your turn how you want to play it. Whatever is the most convenient until you run out of energy until you, or until you run out of resources, whichever happens first. Or sometimes it's smarter to save energy because we have cards like this. Wait. It's not letting me select it during my opponent's turn. But, yeah. So, they, they drew a card. They added another uh, energy into their uh, pile. And, you know, they are, they're just raw attacking us with their Frieza. And I'm not going to block this. Why? Because by taking this attack, I add one card for my life to my hand. So, we just got an extra card in our hand just by getting attacked earlier on. And that, to me, in my opinion, is worth taking the single damage because we have eight life. Why do we care about, you know, just one life at the beginning of the game? Okay, so now we're at this point where we need to select another card in our hand to use this energy. We're going to need to select this every turn. Sometimes it's better to preemptively select cards as energy. Now, oftentimes, you, you may be skewed to use cards that are extra cards as energy. Now, extra cards do not have any battle power, they do not have any characters or special traits, and they have a similar cost system, but they don't make you, um, they have a similar cost system and they also still count as the same color, you know, down here, right? But this is more like a spell card. You, 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 you play it and then it goes to the grave. Which is which in Dragon Ball Super is called the drop area. Now I'm going to use this as energy simply because I have too many good cards in my hand that I want to use for other things. So now I uh, I charged up that and now it becomes my main phase. I can do so many different things. I'm going to start by playing this two drop trunks from my hand. Now for two drop, 15 15,000 attack is pretty good. 15k is pretty good. So now. Because we have no energy left, if I want to continue my turn, I should attack with this Goku. 
I really don't care if this attack hits or not, because the point of this attack is to give me back an energy. If, you know, Frieza wants to block, he can, but I don't think that would be a smart strategy for him. He only has three cards in hand. Yeah, you see? Now, these CPUs will not be the most optimal at the game, but because they are going to be throwing sometimes, you may not know the most optimal plays, but it will let you, you know, experiment and, you know, uh, try out different things, right? So now we're going to play another Kind Sans on Goku, and again we whiffed on, on the Gokus. That's crazy. Well, um, at least Trunks can attack. And now this is, because this is a 15,000 attacker, he would need 10k to block. Everything in this game, or m most, the majority of this game are going to be in multiples of 5,000. So when you are attacking a 10,000 attack monster, or a 10,000 attack battle card, with someone who has 15,000, most times they're going to need 10,000 to block, which is usually two different cards they're going to need to block this attack. Unless they have something like uh Weiss's coercion or they have something like um you know a super combo so here he's going to be using two cards to block my attack which i just don't think is a good idea but still Because one way or the other, we are either giving him damage, or we're lowering the number of cards in his hand. Either or is a better situation for us. And now, we're going to end turn here, because we've, we've run out of things to do. And, you know, in a more modern setting, Dragon Ball Super, like, your cards do more when they're played. And there are more cards that don't need energy to activate their conditions. So, there's going to be a lot more times... Where you're going to be able to do something with less energy. In modern Dragon Ball Super, a turn can definitely be... I mean, a game could be ended by the time that someone is at 3 energy. That That is not out of the ordinary. They are attacking me with Frieza. And we're going to hit next. We're going to take the 1 damage. Because, again, we don't care that we're taking this damage. Because it is still... We still have 6 more life after that. And we get to add another card from our life to our hand. Now, this is something interesting. Instead of attacking our leader to give us another card to hand, they are attacking our battle card, which is a really good thing that you can do. Because you can attack your opponent's battle cards that are in rest mode to stop them from potentially attacking you again. Now, because this is a 20k banan over here, I don't even know who this nigga is. Because he's 20k, we would need 10k to block. Now, they are out of energy, they have one card left in hand, and they just don't have any other things they can do this turn. So this is most likely their final attack. And so because of that, I think it is worth it to use our combo power on our field to block. We don't want to use the combo in our hand because this could potentially get us another card next turn. Versus where these two on field were already used. So they're really just waiting to be used for combo power anyway. That's really all they can be used for. And protecting our trunks, which which can again threaten him for damage next turn, isn't really the worst idea because we can use because th this trunks is more useful than these two cards combined because of that. So, because we have more defense power than their attack power, the attack was unsuccessful, and they are going to end their turn. Yep. So it's our turn again. We draw a card, and we get to put a card into our charge area. I mean, into our energy. We get to charge a card into our energy. This this costs four, so this would be a good card to keep in hand, because we have a one-drop Goku right here. I think, personally, I might put this Whis down, because it's worthless in our hand until we have four energy. And because we play multiple copies of this, uh, we can potentially get another one later on in, our, in the game. So I think this will be... The best card to use for energy at this point and to start our turn again we are going to play another son goku 
sacrificing one energy to play it. And now we finally got a, a Sun Goku from the top. We're pretty much just going to use this for energy next turn. We definitely don't need this card because of how high the cost of playing this card is. So you see when it, when it has uh, three blue dots and then the two here? That means that this is three, three blues plus two color uh, plus two energy of any color meaning this is a, a five cost total to evolve this card onto another son goku where it is a six cost total to play it from your hand normally that is still very steep cost and we're only at three energy there's no way that we are playing this anytime soon so next turn this is a good card we can put in our energy so to continue our turn we are going to attack with our goku into their frieza and again, we don't care if the attack hits or not, because we are only attacking to get back our blue energy. So we get to put Vegeta back into active mode. And we're not going to combo, because it won't be worth it. And the attack is successful. Now they got to add a card from their life to their hand because of that. Which some might say was a bad idea. And the reason for that is, I don't want them to keep this banana on field. But the only way I will be over to swing over this banana is if I use my trunks and I boost him with combo power. Because he's only at 15k normally and we have to be over 20k. Now because I just added a card from his life to his hand, it's very likely that he may have a card that he can use to guard. So he may have like a 5k guard in his hand that, that can stop my attack. So if I do attack this thing, I want to be over 25. But if I'm going to be over 25, then I'm going to need to use one of these cards from my hand. Ultimately, it may have been better to attack this banana first before attacking his leader. Sequencing is pretty much the name of the game in Dragon Ball Super. Like, the, the order that you do things will probably dictate whether you win or lose the game. Little things like that are going to be important, which may not seem like a big deal now, but later on in the game, if this thing is still on the field, because I chose to attack with my leader first rather than attacking with Trunks first, it may cost me in the long run. It's easier to deal with things now than it is to wait until... They are no longer a problem. Now, because I want to, because I don't care about this God Rush Son Goku, and I want to guarantee that this card does not stay on the field, I'm going to use one of my energy. I'm going to pay one energy so that I can use this uh, Goku as combo. And once I start to use this Goku as combo, it will be very hard for him to block this attack because that means both. Of the cards in his hand will need to be 5k combo or 5k uh we'll, we'll need to have 5k combo power to be useful in this in this scenario now if i wanted to guarantee that he w is not able to um guard this i could use to son goku but i don't think that'll be worth it because i want to keep this son goku on field to evolve it into this son goku next turn so let's see what Frieza does here. So there's no guarding. The attack is successful. And we got rid of our opponent's strongest card. We still have two energy, so there's one more thing we can do. We can pay our two energy to play this Piccolo from our hand. But we're not going to attack with this Piccolo because it has this ability called Blocker. Basically what that means is that whenever another card I control is attacked... If he is in active mode and in my battle area, then I get to switch him to rest mode and then change the target to him. And so, if you watch me play the beta, you saw me play a lot of those King Kai's and those um, Human Shield Krillins because they have the skill Blocker, and Blocker is a very useful skill. I don't think it's worth it on a 2-drop, but it's better to just have it and not need it than it is to need it and not have it. And now, we used up all our energy, so we're going to end our turn here. Now, sometimes it may be risky to play cards like this at the beginning of the game, because a lot of decks these days have cards that can KO their opponent's cards. Right? So now he's just played this Shisami the Loyal Warrior. And so what this does is that it allows him 
to um, basically select my trunks and my trunks normally cards that are in rest mode go back into active mode during your uh, charge phase but because of his ability my trunks will not go back into uh, into active mode right next turn meaning it will be stuck in this position which means if he wanted to attack this trunks now it is a lot less useful to me than it was last turn okay so his first move is to declare an attack with his leader to my leader and my um my instinct will be not to block this attack because it's not worth using my blocker for an attack that i'm not going to care about anyway so we're going to let him attack my leader so that uh i can take one damage and add a card from life to hand And now he's going to attack again with his Shisami, and he's also going to be attacking my leader. But he has this ability called Double Strike, where he, when he attacks, he gives me two cards instead of one. Now, again, it may seem scary because my life is starting to go down, and if I take this attack, I'll be down at three life. But because, again, I will have more chances to defend myself, there's no need to be extremely defensive about a double strike this early in the game. Unless you feel, um, uh, unless your opponent has some ability like critical, right? Which is um, which is where in, if the attack is, is successful, the cards go to the drop area instead. Unless they have some ability like that, it's, it's kind of just worth it to, again, still just take the attack, even if you go down to three life. So we got to add two cards from our life to our hand, and now you're going to see this thing called Awakening Ready. Now, for 90% of the cards in the game, let's let's put one of our energy down. We have two of these Gokus. We're, we're not going to be playing two of them. Now, for 90% of cards in the game, right, let's look at our Goku. They have this Awakening when their life is at four or less. Now, some cards, like this Amasu leader that you may have seen me play during the beta, cannot awaken until your life is at 2 or less. But most, most leader cards are when your life is at 4 or less. And his ability is, you may draw 2 cards and flip this card over, and that's where your, your true leader starts to come into play. The, usually, the abilities are stronger, right? So, he has a permanent where if I have 5 more energy, he gains 5,000 power during my turn, which means... He will be permanently at 20,000 20, power to start, meaning we will have a slight advantage over our, our opponent's leader, which may be stuck at 15,000. And then when he, when he attacks, he draws a card and he switches two energy to active mode instead of just one. So there is really no downside to Awakening. As a matter of fact, it is an essential part of the game. And because our awakening clause is just to draw two cards, we can use it at any point in our turn. I think it's it's on it may be better to just use it now so that we can get some of the uh, effects of him attacking as well. Do, 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 do. And yeah, the, the the music does change when you awaken. We don't have 5 energy yet, but we might have a way to get up to 5 energy using our quirky our quirky Whis card. So we're going to play this Bulma from our hand. And what this Bulma does is that it adds a Whis with an energy cost of 4 or lower from our deck to our hand. Digging through our deck, we do still have another Whis, so we get to add it to hand. But this Whis is a 4 drop. And so this Goku, to get the most out of its effect, we, we want to switch 2 of our blue energy to active mode. So what we're going to do is we are going to attack with this Piccolo. We're going to attack with this Piccolo into one of his leader cards. And we're going to use just, you know, one of our things to combo. And the attack was successful. So they got to add a card from their life to their hand. And it is kind of tough because this, um, this Trunks you know, is stuck in rest mode, but I think now's a good time to attack with our 
Super Saiyan God Son Goku. And there's a reason for this. Now normally, in the normal card game of Dragon Ball Super, you can have as many cards in your battle area as as possible. What, as many cards as you can play is as many cards as you can have in the battle area. Unfortunately, for this app, you can only have a maximum of four cards in your battle area. I'm just going to read him just to make sure we don't have to attack a leader card, right? So we are going to attack his Shisama here. So that we can draw a card and then switch our energy back to active. We can use a combo card from our hand to guarantee that this attack goes through, but we don't want to... We, we don't want to waste cards that can potentially save us later on. So, I am not going to use the Son Goku on field, nor am I going to use anything in our hand. If the attack goes through, it goes through. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Let's see what happens. Oh, they had the combo. Awesome. So, the attack is deflected. But, we are the real winners here, because we are now back at 4 energy. And what that means is that we get to play this Whis from our hand. And be, because we just played this Whis, we get to add a card from the top of our deck into our life. This would have been great before we, we attacked with Goku, but because of sequencing, we had to use this Goku to, um, to switch to energy back to active mode to even play this Whis. So again, it's... It's still not the worst situation ever. And we can also use this Whis to attack into one of his battle cards. Now, he's at 5 life, right? And so what some people would do is they would not attack the leader here because he would also get to draw 2 cards when he awakens, once he gets down to 4 life. It would be smarter to attack his battle card, actually. And maybe use a card like this Trunks. And this Goten. To make sure that he cannot survive this attack. And now, by not putting our opponent at 4 life, we've stuck them in a situation where they will just have a useless turn. And this is one of the big brain things about Dragon Ball Super, is that if you do not have a card that manually takes away one of your own life to your hand, then you will have a situation like this where if your opponent plays it right, you will you will just have to skip a turn and that will put you behind in the later turns of the game. Because look at me, I have 5 energy, I have so many cards in my hand and, you know, things I can do with, um, you know, all my cards next turn. Um, I have a leader that can replenish my energy and will also go up to 20k during my turn, making it even harder to block, making you have to sacrifice even more cards to, um, to uh, block his attacks. So, by giving, by ending right here, this Frieza literally cannot do anything except attack one of my battle cards. Now, he charges up his energy, so he's at 5 energy as well. Now, does he play this card from his hand? Yes, he does. So, he gets to choose two, two of my battle cards, and these two will not go back to active mode during my next turn. Now, he is going to attack my Piccolo. Now, because he targeted this Piccolo with his Shisama, I don't think it's worth protecting with my counterplay. Now basically what they were asking if I want to activate my counter skill is this card in my hand. Once once it gets back to an open game state, I'll, I'll show you guys what, what we're talking about. Now again, I'm just not going to use this battle, uh, this this counter skill because oh shit I think I have to because I I pressed yes 
But you know what? Fuck it. It's called Weiss's Coercion, right? And this is one of the cards that you saw me use in the uh, beta a lot if you watch me play, if you watch me live stream on my other channel. It's a card that basically costs one energy to negate one of my opponent's attacks, and then it gives me back an energy so that if I have multiple in my hand, I can activate multiple in the same turn. Alright, so we drew our card, and we drew two of these Gohans, so you know what, we're going to place one of these Gohans down, because we don't need both of them. Now, we have six energy, we have five cards in hand, and although this Whis is useless uh, for now, um, it is possibly something that they can target for an attack next turn. So... To start, this Goku has this thing called Evolve, right? So it is two blues and two generic, which means it is a four cost total um, to evolve rather than paying five to play it normally. Now, when you evolve, you evolve on top of a card that is specified in its name, right? So it says Son Goku, so you have to evolve on top of a Son Goku. Yep. And we pay four. Now his effect is that because he was evolved, he gains the extra ability of dual attack, which means he gets to attack twice in the same turn, um, and he also has double strike, meaning each time he attacks, he inflicts two damage instead of just one, meaning this is possibly going to be our game ender this turn, but we'll see. I think we should start our turn with this Son Goku attacking because we used up four of our energy. We get to draw one and we get to put two of our energy back into active mode, meaning we will have four active energy. And because we are attacking his battle card, he will not be able to, you know, get a card from life for this. The only reason why I don't want to attack his leader just yet is be is because, you know, if I attacked his leader first, then he may have cards to protect his battle card. Vers where if I attack the battle card first, he has nothing, he has no cards in hand to protect himself. Meaning, this Goku is just going to have free real estate for this attack. He has no way to guard, and he's going to take 2 damage. Right? So he gets to add two cards from life to hand. And because it has dual attack, it will switch back to active mode so we can attack again. Now, he will have two cards in hand, but you know what he won't have? A way to protect himself um, from this, our Gohan. Right? Because our Gohan is a four, dry, uh, a four drop also with double strike. So, what, what we want to do is that we want him to use his resources to block this Trunks attack. So that we can get him down to a single life and then threat him for game. Because it's better to attack with this Trunks now so that he has to, you know, potentially use a card to block its attack than it is... To attack with this uh, Goku and give him two cards to block with first. Okay. So the attack may have been unsuccessful. But we're not done yet. This Goku gets to attack again for with with double strike for potentially two damage. And this is very significant, because now that we have 4 energy, we can use this 1-drop Vegeta to make sure the attack goes through. But he will have 3 cards in hand. 
Meaning we don't want to use this one drop Vegeta just yet. Rather, let's use this um, Taunting Piccolo to see if he has the cards to block 25k. As a matter of fact, let's use Guardian Northkai as well. Well, if we use both, he just... he. If it's just too overwhelming for him to block, he might just choose not to block so that he can get the two extra cards to his hand. And then when we play our Mighty Striker Son Gohan, he may have too many cards to actually, um, for us to actually hit over. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll try with 25k to see if this goes through. No, the attack was successful. And now he's going to have five cards in hand. But we have one more play. And basically, he's going to have to use everything to block this attack. This is sort of like a really risky strategy. Because I could have kept my four energy, just played this uh, Guardian North guy, and then have Weiss's Coercion. So I could have had two layers of protection. But I'm sacrificing these two layers of protection to potentially go for game this turn. So we're going to attack into his Frieza. And... We're going to be... Because we know that he has no, no counter card, because he didn't activate anything during his counter timing, we can support with our Guardian North Kai and we're going to be at 30k. Meaning, he needs four cards to block here. Let's see if he has it. Okay, that's one. That's two. That's three. And that's four. Okay. So he, he used four cards to block, but because he used so many cards from his hand, it's very unlikely that he will be able to go for game next turn. But let's see. It's possible. It is still possible. But I doubt it. So two cards in hand, one card in hand, and one Frieza attacker. And literally he has nothing. So <laughs> he's going to attack our Whis, and he's going to let himself draw one card. Which, again, we have nothing to block. So we're going to let him go through. And, you know, get get his little death ball animation going. And that's it. That was his entire turn. If he didn't lose last turn, he was definitely he's definitely gonna lose now. Let's well, uh, let's put down this Assailant Vegeta. Because, because we have so much energy, we can play the Super Saiyan Vegeta from our hand. And because when we played it and we had five or more energy, we get to draw two cards. Now, I'll be honest here. Unless you're facing some sort of stall deck, games will not get to the point where you have this much energy. Usually, around five to six energy, the game should be closing out. Again, unless you're facing a stall deck that's really good at what it does. Most games would have already ended by this point. Because, you know, this is earlier on in the game's lifespan. Oh. Whoa. That was a really good card he just used there. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me get a read on this thing. So, Rakuma Razor Gun. It costs four. If your if your leader card is yellow, negate the attack. Afterwards, the opponent's battle cards are unable to attack for the duration of the turn. Wow. So because I attacked with my leader card first, I actually just am, am unable to continue playing. This is a really good card. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's nothing else I can do. So now it's his turn again, and now he plays his. Elite Force Captain Ginyu, right? So, 
When you play this card, choose all of your Ginyu Force battle cards. This card gains plus 10k power and double strike for the duration of the turn. So not just this Ginyu, which, you know, again, is both Ginyu Force and Frieza's army, which is, again, like I said earlier, like some cards will be double, double trait um, and double character. This one's double trait. So anything with a Ginyu Force trait would get plus 10k power. So let's let's look at his drop area actually. After after he's done attacking. So because this Frieza really doesn't have much of a threat to us, you would think, okay, we can let him attack. But there's one reason why we would not want him to attack us at this point. And it's because he has another card with double strike. Meaning that if this attack goes through, even though we are getting an extra card and we are more than safe for the rest of the turn with the amount of resources that we have, if he gets a single double strike attack in after that, like however it happens, we would just lose the game from there. So it is safer to just not let him, not let his attack go through. So we're going to activate our counter card, Weiss's Coercion, which counters the attack and gives us back one of our energy. Now, when you counter an attack, um, cards with effects to activate when they attack still activate, but, you know, yeah. The attack doesn't go through. He's attacking with a 35,000 Captain Ginyu. And again, we are going to negate this attack because we do not want this double strike to go through because if this double strike were to go through, I'd be at one life left and any single attack, if he happened to just have the um, power to make it happen would be able to close the game so we just don't want to be in that situation so it's better to be safe than sorry we were able to stop both of his attacks because we didn't have to use our Weiss's coercions earlier on in the game that's why you don't want to use too much of your resources blocking early attacks because if you block those early attacks you're one losing out on cards that could potentially help you further your your strategy and two you also may be wasting cards that may be more essential later on in the game, like this, that just saved us from taking a double strike to the face that would have, you know, potentially put us in a checkmate scenario. So yeah. So because he has no energy left, there's no chance that he can activate another one of these Rakuma Razor Guns. But still, we're just going to attack with, uh, with our Gohan first. 25k double strike he needs three to block which he only has two cards in hand meaning there is no put there's no possible way he can block this and you know just to add insult to injury what a lot of people do is that you know to guarantee that you don't have the ability to block this attack they will put everything into their combo area right uh just sacrifice one for that just sacrifice one for this. And, yep. We we used everything to make our Gohan 65,000 attack. Meaning there's no potential way they can even come close to blocking that. And that, my friends, is how you play the Dragon Ball Super card game. Obviously, there is more to it than that, but this is just the general flow of gameplay um, and the very basics of the rules. It may have been harder to pick up in the beta because the beta, the UI, was a little more spread out, right? Where in this, you have, like, the zones are clearer, where the cards go are clearer, the leader area is clear, clearer, so. This isn't a perfect reflection of how the game is today because the game has, again, advanced from this point. We now have an extra deck. We have a lot more that we do, we can do with our cards and our energy, but it, it is still the same ideas. And so um, if you haven't played Dragon Ball Super before, this is a good way to get started. Then after using a program like this, you go on a website like Deck Planet, you look up your favorite character, you get to see what kind of decks that you, know, you could potentially use with those characters that you like. Because this this not only has a card database, it also has a deck database where you can search by the leader. It asks you which leader would you like to search by. So let's say Absolute God Fuse Zamasu and deck list will start to come up. And so this one's like control based, um, 
Some are, you know, janky, uh, fun. You can look up deck strategies like combo, control, board control, hand control, mid-range, mill, uh, combo, and then you say format, best of one, best of three. If you want to be competitive, if you want to be more casual, this website sort of has it all. And every card on this website will have like a link to TCG player, how much it costs, and to card market as well, so that if you wanted to find where you could, you know, get these individual cards at, because a lot of them are going to be like kind of hard to get if, if you wanted to know where you could get cards at. There are a bunch of rarity differences like this particular card. If we look at the, this is like the more common version or it's, it's super rare, that's what it's called, right? So this is like the cheapest one where the max rarity version, the cards get alternate artworks. It's the exact same card, right? It's as the exact same effect, is the exact same card, but this is the highest rarity. Like the card looks a lot better. Is there anyone with pictures here? No, there's no one with pictures. I wish there was someone with pictures so I could show you guys all the, all the small differences, but yeah, you know, I'm sure you guys get the point. That was how to play the Dragon Ball Super card game. Stick around, we got a lot more content coming out really soon because uh, not only will I show you guys, showcase to you guys all the decks and the potential that you can do in the tutorial app so that you can practice, but we will also be um, up uploading the matches that we played in the beta, the fun games that we had there so that you guys can see more of what the game, the amazing digital simulator that they're going to release sometime in the future maybe next year um so that you guys can get into dragon ball super as well if you're not into it already and y you know you're sort of just watching just to you know find more people to play with i know there are locals irl that play this game too they may be a, a bit more few and far between because one piece digimon is taking over that's all for now hope you guys enjoyed there's your boy nistro here signing out